Yo! How's everyone doing? Back for some more random tips, tidbits, stuff that happened. <laughs> stuff that happened and I kind of want to share. Impromptu. Okay. So, you guys remember when I was talking about Bern Holgard, his method, and uh, switching between being a bit more loose to analytical? Well, let's get into this whole analytical thing uh, for once. Mostly because it has its it has its advantages, and I guess I could say it's more of a study type of advantage than um, a practical. No, than a let loose. Uh, you'll see what I mean, okay? So when I'm talking about the technical type of stuff, let's see, extra stage. Um, I want to draw the main character, but I know that I will be drawing someone else. Okay, so let me go with my social justice weeaboo. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's multiple ways to, to see it, okay, but it's quite fascinating once you get down to it. Uh, of course, you start with gesture. I this is one of the reasons why I hate digital work. It just feels so small. It's not on the Cintiq. Ah, okay, uh, I'll, I'll stop crying, okay, guys? So, you start with your gesture, okay? Uh, let's see, this, this kind of has a Remy pose. Ah, man, now I want to draw him as Remy from First Strike for some reason. And I still need to work on this character concept some more, but... Okay, got my gesture down. Let's see if I can uh, add a semblance of breakdown for face. Okay, uh, let's see. And you can even go off from a gesture, okay? Let's see, uh, let me add some more spike to it. Meaning I, I want to mess around with a proportion. I kind of want to have a flow to go to it. Uh, let's see. Like, uh, again, just trying to make both silhouette, both gesture, like, not trying to go too fancy here, okay? And this kind of also tallies up or ties up with the giving yourself a chance, or giving, give yourself a chance! Okay. Um, so I've got my somewhat of a breakdown, okay? Even though I need to work on the character concept some more, but blah, blah, blah. So... When getting analytical, and this is where you get to break yourself. Let me add a darker color. This is where you're going to get into that super high breakdown technicality, okay? And by that I mean this face, now uh, I'm breaking it into planes. And uh, it, again, you can mix it, it's more so for studies, but it does have its use when you're doing your actual work. Yet, you do get a, an easier time studying with that. Okay? So, how do you say? Right now, I'm just breaking down his face uh, into planes. And then, being very, very analytical. Like, I, I want to know the entire IT of this person's 3D aspect. So, I'm going to make sure that the eyes... I give myself some guidelines to get that 3D uh, feel, you know, to, to be able to sense all the planes. And this is where, you know, having those middle lines really helps because you are basically um, splitting them, splitting down to the middle certain planes. Uh, what do I mean for planes? It's like platforms. You look at this nose, that's one plane, that's one plane, or surface, I guess. So one plane goes like this, another plane goes like that. There's planes on the side. Like, this is what I mean. So you add a middle line to it. Even though, like, you're just sketching, okay? You're just, you're just sketching. You're studying. You're playing around, okay? But you will start to understand how your character goes and feels in three dimensions. Uh, when it comes to the head, now I want to reiterate the skull because I've done uh, a top that's way too high. So that's why, okay, my middle breakdown line from the nose, I'll make it go up to get a better gauge at how, um, how high I want to make the top of the head. 
because I was overly com or overcompensating for the hair, which is another thing I'll have to add and break down. Uh, eyes to eyes to ears, ears to nose, or bottom ear to nose. Like just getting into that technical breakdown. Um, I should have chose a better character, mostly because I'm still redesigning this one uh, to make him even closer to his original idea. But okay. Uh, for the mouth, still need to study the mouth, but I know there's a, a set of quick little planes that will appear, and this is where your studies come in really handy. If you study using that technique, you'll get, um, not saying a finer grasp, but you'll get the analytical grasp of it. Uh, I'm not going to give him a jaw, or that strong of a jaw, I kind of want to make him lean, uh, chin, average chin. It's not going to be like a, a super chin or a special chin. Now, even going even further where I want to get to the eyes, you know, it's, uh, let me just, eyes, I wanted to give him uh, average eyes, but now I'm going into the eyebrow. Like, all of this is to keep this technical, okay? Go from your, your quick gesture into a technical piece of work. Um or technical analysis, technical breakdown. You're you're looking at the frame datas of your own character, okay? So right now, as you see, I'm doing a circle because the neck is gonna fit into the chest. Uh, or the, well, chest, uh, yeah, yeah, chest. Um, I thought there was another technical term, but let's not get into that. And of course, I'm drawing true because logically, the neck, technically fits in like that but let me just reiterate by forming a box for the chest a box that you can either split in three or you can keep in two it all depends on you there's multiple techniques now that I've seen um, very good use of it being split into tree and fitting the purpose I like using it like that uh, it's kind of like using a floor sack floor sack if your um, if your body's twisting then the floor sack might be a bit of a better example. Like one body's going this way, the other one's going there. So there's going to be a twist. Even though the box is there to help uh, with directions, it's still kind of like a floor sack. Like there's a pinch because I'm trying to get to that point. It's a tad bit weird to try and make it work like this. But you know, you, you see what I'm talking about. So. Again, going into the breakdown, I'm not trying to be too complex, not like what I've done here, but I'm just trying to get shapes, and I want them to be um, logical and relative to each other in perspective. Maybe I should have done my perspective grid. Okay, maybe I should do it right now. Let me see. I might be able to add that really quickly. Ah, I didn't want to add blue. Uh, let's see, make it green. The American Dream. I kind of just want to add a perspective grid to lay things down, to have things in dimension. Okay, I'm not going to get extremely technical with this perspective grid per se, because I'm not, um, like I haven't fully set the figure in perspective, you know, it's not going to recede in the back. It's basically a standing figure, so I don't really have that need, or I'm not setting it in an environment, but I guess I'll show another point where I'll do that. So, again, right now, let's see, pelvis area, let's connect the leg. I'm feeling that my legs may be a bit too long. Um, again, well, actually, kind of fits with the character. Kind of fits. Uh, or maybe not. I'll maybe do a retraction here. You know, you can always edit. One was way longer than the other. But hey, that's why sketching happens. Um, also, the flow of the leg didn't go the way I wanted. Uh, let's see. You know, even up to a point where I'm going to put landmarks for the legs or for the feet. Because I want a better grasp at how this figure is standing, okay? How is it standing? And now, okay, well, I've got my figure nailed down. I started from up to down. Let me just try to play around and do 
down to up. So again, uh, maybe box shape or a weird triangle type box shape for the foot. Um, separate splitting that into two because I'm not going to go into toes and such things. I just want the breakdown and I will draw true like full 3D. Okay, I you want to get a feeling for all of that sounds really awkward all of the character parts such as how things connect to each other and things go in relativity because this does have a bit of an act on your brain okay it does have a bit of an act on your brain it does help uh, what I've noticed from doing that a couple of times uh, going back to the Hogarth method is that I start thinking about how uh, one body part relates to another, even its backside that I cannot see. Yet it all kind of helps out because it it kind of feeds my knowledge of human anatomy in a sense. Uh, it, it's kind of like patting yourself in the back, but then re uh, reconfirming yourself, reconfirming what you've set down. Okay, it's kind of an odd way to say it, but. I guess that's the way I can say, you know, you you <laughs> verify your hit confirms in training mode if you want to go in fighting game terms. But uh, there you go, you know, right now, not necessarily cylinders, but I still want to make sure that it all makes sense in relativity to each other. Uh, this is why I kind of prefer traditional sketching, because I have the full figure in front of me, since here... I don't know, I have this thing where I'm going to have to just put my face next to the screen because I, I see it from far apart, but sometimes you don't want to be close to the screen, to the screen unless it's a Cintiq. Uh, okay, digital woes, people, digital woes. Yet, yeah, you'll, you'll try it out traditionally, it doesn't really matter. But there you go, you have your full, somewhat of a full treaty breakdown. Uh, let's see, maybe add some more. Huh? Going a bit nuttier, like the, especially when you get to the arms, feet, and head, things get really nuts because your breakdown starts to become uh, a bit more complex. Like right now, cylinder, cylinder, maybe cylinder or uh, a wedge type of shape. Um, and again, trying to go with my triple cylinder, but I did have a better breakdown technique for fingers, always starting with the last one for me. Because I seem to, like, I have this stupid little phobia of drawing over what I've, do, what I've done. And I guess it all goes with control, but that's a whole different thing. Yet, that's why I start with the last one, and eventually I just toughen up and draw over, and it doesn't really matter to me. But, uh, let's see, okay, so I have this breakdown down. How do I go even further? Well, let's see. Um, well then... Let me start considering bones, you know, shoulder girdles. Where do they fit there, you know? Uh, and this is where I start going with actual knowledge of anatomy. Shoulder girdle, uh, how it links to the chest. Chest, how how does the volume of the chest fits in? And even now, I don't even give a damn about the costume. I don't care about the character accessory. I just want to do a breakdown. Like right now, I'm just... Okay, shoulder, how, how big or how broad is it? Should it be broad? Is it going to fit like that? Is the shape going to fit into this? And I still see what happen what's happening behind, you know? I'm still keeping what's happening behind. Oh, big mistake right here. Should have, should have, could have, didn't. Uh, continue doing the box. Again, full 3D. I, I, I did a part of it, but not the entirety. Yeah, this is where getting that box and maybe even making a box shape for the first uh, shoulder helps me put in perspective and in relation the other one because it's a box on top of that side of the other box so i'm starting to you know you're starting to play lego now and you, you can even have more fun by going you know what maybe i don't want the arm like that maybe i want the arm raised but i'm keeping this arm this is analytical you know i'm just playing around Yet, I'm going to use its length, do an arc, and then uh, maybe the arc should go this way. Let me just reiterate, because I want to do an arc. I'm doing two arcs, okay? One was for the arm, but I know I want to make a leaning pose. So at this point, how 
is it all coming down? Like, I'm just trying to do arcs and seeing, okay, well, maybe I'm going to have to raise the arm a bit if this measure placed here is a bit too much. And it, uh, true eye, it doesn't really look like it, but, you know, you'll do your own little analysis. But this is the fun part. Right now, it, you, okay, you're drawing maybe stiff, all right? This is, I still consider this stiff. Yet, you are having the time of your life um, just basically looking at your options, looking at your, breaking down your character into each and every little elements and details and seeing how one part relates to another in perspective uh, while standing, while doing something else. Like, even there, okay, I have did my arm, uh, arm length like this, but maybe you know what let me lower it down so I'm gonna put an arc here the arm is gonna be lowered down I still have to draw true because I have to know where it's gonna land or where it's situated on the body this is where things get a bit messy but hey you know how to handle it right you give yourself multiple chances this is only one layer after this I've got I can maybe do two or three more layers just to break it down and get things uh, tighten up because right now I'm just going with analytical thoughts yet at one point I'm gonna go okay I understand the character I understand the position of the neck and all these types of things compared to each other time to sit settle the pose and get something done and this is where I guess I would just shut that down or lower it and then all right let's go with round round two or round three and just okay let's sketch and maybe maybe I want to keep some more guidelines maybe I want to do another breakdown an even better breakdown or maybe I just want to sketch over it but with more energy yet seeing that I did this analysis I'm not gonna easily throw it away I'm gonna use it to reinforce the sketch and possibly make it less stiff or if your gesture was already fluid as hell uh, who knows, you might compensate, you might tone it down, uh, stop it from being a tube in a sense, or going too wacky, and actually get a balance. I, again, it's the main theme. Like, always comes with balance, okay? But uh, that's, that's the thing, you know? So right now, I can just have fun sketching, but while I'm sketching, I'm, I'm not trying to think, you know, because I already did all the thinking, but I'm just going along with uh, like I'm letting my brain go with the previous analysis and thoughts that I've made up the previous processes and just going for broke with it and as soon as I start adding clothing maybe adding clothing would have been on the previous step because there is an anim um, analytical breakdown to clothing or maybe I'm gonna do the breakdown on this this layer you know this attempt this impact this strike second impact for strike you know maybe uh it all depends on you but this is basically just go crazy go nut nutty 3d analyze your entire figure break down your pose and you, hell even set environments uh that's another thing that could also justify your concept if you put it in an environment then and see if it makes sense doesn't if it doesn't make sense okay why doesn't it make sense is it because the character's too short? Is it because uh, the anatomy is not proper? Like, why? Just keep asking yourself why, in a sense, after seeing that it doesn't make sense. And just go for broke. All right? So, it's one of those things that you, well, you might as well check out, try out time from time to time. And hell, while you do studies, okay? While you do studies from references and pictures, it's a good thing to try and pull off, you know, analytic or analytically, sorry for my, my Canadian, okay? Analytically break down your studies so that once you let loose and do your gesture and get your your um, your practice off, you'll automatically have these kind of moves built in and you'll be able to do it on the fly. But that's, you know, you have to do it a lot, a lot, a lot of time. And of course, it'll make your drawing stiff at times. So you've got to balance yourself out, yet it is a very powerful tool to acquire. Um, you can also check Bern Hogarth's book. Lots of analysis on that, or lots of great details. 
<clears throat> had to take some caffeine here. Uh, Glenn Vilpu, another great teacher that teaches m a mix between this kind of breakdown and just going with the flow. Like, very interesting teacher. And um, Bridgeman. Bridgeman is completely mechanical. Very mechanical. But worth it. All right? So go nuts, go crazy. Try, try doing your full 3D breakdowns. Have fun. Um, mess around with the pose and then just justify it later on. But always like those lines again. I should have made a full draw through. That's my mistake. This is shit I'm gonna work and practice on. Mostly because I can have an easier time relating parts and uh, effects to each other and I'll know how it happens. Hell, even doing daring things like I see daring things because I don't dare or I haven't dared until recently like um, the spine the spine line keep the spine line you'll have your drawing is gonna be is gonna to you it's gonna look messed up but there are ways to make it work and besides you're just analyzing yet if you're light enough or you're using various layers doesn't matter it'll all look small and not really noticeable and here I am about to get entrenched into trying to do a proper connection of the spine to the neck because my torso is starting at a bad place so lots more practice to do on that end and also the torso is not just a simple box it's a good way to start it but um, you know you have the shoulder you have the chest uh, I think chest is higher like plane wise okay all the kind of stuff that you're gonna have to study but I gotta balance it all with the current design because I don't want this to turn into Kratos yet I don't want this to turn into a toothpick so it's all about balance and testing out and analyzing I guess at the same time lowering the shoulders like you're just having fun here again keeping that treaty shape treaty shape very important but that's your analytical time okay that's your breakdown time and then you can just go crazy with something else letting loose all right that is it for this crazy ass video kind of hope it helps it's been helping me from time to time I, uh instagram should have a couple of tests that i've done with this even though they are some of them are even further rendered and I'll see what I can do about that like if I have any non-rendered uh, tests that I made with this I'll post them on Instagram or the ROM HQ Facebook page um, so yeah thanks again guys if it helps anyone I'm glad if it doesn't sorry like we all have different methods of learning you know and this is just one tool in a bucket of multiple swords that we can use to make our drawing all right and god damn, I need to get a Cintiq. One day, one day. Till then, there's traditional, and I am getting a new camera set up, so this is going to get much better. I'll see you guys next time, and thanks again.